Freehold is an absolute fan favourite and I would expect that it's in most players top 10 favourite dungeons ever. The combination of an open plan dungeon with lots of interesting tactics gives a high skill ceiling that seems to have left an impression with most players. In this guide we will be covering everything that you need to know to get you started in Mythic Plus in patch 10.1. Let's get on with it then, the first boss split has some dangerous mobs for melee specifically. The Enforcer will periodically turn around and cast a brutal backhand. This is essentially a reverse frontal and will almost definitely one-shot you on higher keys, so you need to watch out for this. The Enforcers will also cast a shattering toss on tanks which will throw you around. Just make sure you aren't going to be thrown into other mobs and you'll be absolutely fine. The Enforcers will often be combined with other mobs called Iron Tide Mastiffs. These dogs will cast a bestial wrath every once in a while, which will massively increase their damage. Using Soothes here will help your wonderful tanks and keep them happy and healthy. Next up we have the Bone Sores. These mobs will sometimes cast a healing bomb which will heal a mob for approximately 30% of their HP over 6 seconds. Always make sure that you try and interrupt these casts. Finally, for this split then, you will sometimes have mobs called crack shots. They will throw grenades sometimes, just make sure you avoid these and you will be absolutely fine. On to our wonderful first boss then, Sky Cap and Crag. This boss has two phases. In the first phase, the boss will cast two abilities. The first is Pistol Shot, which just does damage to a random player. The second ability is Charge, which is a much more deadly cast where Crank will charge across the arena to a brown swirly. Standing in the path of this charge or standing near the boss when he casts the charge will seriously hurt, so make sure you move away from this. At 75% HP, Crank will jump off his parrot mount and start fighting you himself. The parrot will now patrol the arena from above and periodically cast Vile Bombardment, which is a green patch of goo you need to run out of. The parrot will also drop down and continue to cast charges across the arena. Range specifically need to make sure that you watch out for this. Crank himself has two new abilities. The first is Revitalizing Brew. This is just a cast that needs interrupting as soon as possible as it's a channeled healing cast. The second is Azerite Powder Shot. This is an AoE. 30 yard range ability which can do some huge damage. At higher keystones this very well might one shot you, there is a little line of sight spot right here that you can use to dodge the ability if necessary. You need to run behind it before the cast starts so you will need a timer to track this ability. Otherwise at lower keys just make sure you don't stack up with others and all get hit by the same powder shot at once and you should be fine. If you are going to try this little line of sight trick, the healer or any ranged player needs to make sure that they are baiting the vile bombardments away from this line of sight spot. You can do do this by always being the closest person to shark bait, the parrot, which is patrolling the sky around the outer edge of the arena. After some practice it's fairly easy, but you need to be highly coordinated to make this work, so it's maybe not the best option for pugs. On to the second boss split then. The first new mob in this area we have is the Oarsman. This mob will periodically cast Sea Spout, which is a floor swirly and should ideally be kicked, although you can move out of it if necessary. Next up we have the Duelist. This mob will cast a Duelist Dash, which targets a brown swirly on the floor and will charge in that direction, damaging and stunning all players in its path. You can and absolutely should stop this with CC if possible. Next we have two types of monkeys in this area. The first is the Swabby which can cast Slippery Suds on you. This debuff means whenever you jump you will be stunned so make sure you don't jump when you have it. The second type of monkey we have is the Buccaneer which will cast Going Bananas. This is a large channeled whirlwind effect which does serious damage. You can stop this cast after the channel has started and you should always try and do so whenever possible. Next we have the Iron Tide Buccaneer. This mob is similar to the monkey version but instead casts a Blade Barrage ability, which again, you should always try and stop if possible as it does AoE damage around the mob. Finally, for this split we have the Vermin Trapper. These mobs typically patrol around the area and will periodically cast something called Rat Traps. You can avoid these traps by moving as the cast finishes. If you get caught by a trap, make sure you use a defensive as this thing hurts. Stacking with other players here can help you make sure you don't run into another trap accidentally. On to our second boss then, the Council of Captains. So for this boss, I was going to talk about the mini games that you have to do. However, they have since been removed. Blizzard have actually removed these mini games. You no longer need to do anything before pulling the Council of Captains. Instead, there will be a rotation which every three weeks, depending on the week that you're in, only two of the three bosses will be active 
and simply you have to deal with the two bosses that are there. Each boss has two abilities, although you'll only be fighting two bosses at once. Eudora is probably the most deadly, so let's talk about this captain first. The first ability from Eudora is a powder shot, which just deals damage to a random player that will need healing up. Make sure you use defensives if you are low and about to be targeted by this ability. The second ability is grape shot. Eudora will jump away and then cast shots in a cone rotation around the room. You need to make sure that you dodge this. If you have great movement, you can always run behind Eudora to make sure you never catch any damage. Or let's say you're very slow, you could instead try and run through the casts in the opposite direction to dodge the damage. Just make sure you're always running left to right so you don't eat multiple grape shots as this will absolutely kill you. Raul again has two abilities. The first is the blackout barrel which will spawn on a random player and others need to kill off quickly to remove it. Next is the barrel smash which is a large swirly which you have to move out from. It does a lot of damage again so do not greed this merely just run away. Finally, we have Captain Jolly, probably the easiest captain. Jolly will do a swirly on the floor, which you will need to walk out from or else you'll take a large bleed effect. Jolly will also create a whirlpool of blades, which will chase players around doing nature damage to anyone caught in it. Again, just make sure that you dodge this. Finally, after going through all of the captains, we need to talk about Rummy. This is a friendly bartender sitting at the side of the arena who throws random brews on the floor. He throws a confidence brew, which increases crit by 50% for eight seconds an invigorating brew which increases haste by 30% for 8 seconds and then a caustic brew which does damage over 8 seconds and needs to be avoided. Either using weak orders or focus targeting Rummy and watching what he casts will mean that you know when to stand in his brews and you absolutely should do so. This is a huge amount of damage if you get it right. On to the third split of trash then. Firstly we have the brine scales. These mobs need to be kicked on their frost blast which is a large frontal. Next we have the knuckle dusters which will infrequently cast shattering blow which does a large amount of AOE damage and interrupts casts. This again should be kicked whenever possible. After this we have these scrappers. These will cast a blind rage and randomly fixate players. This does a lot of damage and needs to be stopped again with stuns or CC whenever possible to allow players to continue doing damage. We also have harpooners. These mobs will cast a dragging harpoon which will sometimes pull players back in towards the pack. This is particularly deadly with the next mob, the Iron Tide Crusher. These big giants firstly do a ground shatter which is a huge AoE effect around the giants which you need to run out of. They also do a throw boulder cast which does a huge amount of damage and again you have to avoid this. Up to our third boss then this is the ring of booty which has three phases there is lots of rp here so it is advised as tanks to pull additional mobs whilst waiting whenever you can to save some time just standing around waiting for the rp is obviously going to slow you down in this dungeon alternatively you can send a stealth player ahead to start the rp and save some time here however then you are losing a dps most likely so sometimes it's not worth it the first encounter is lightning this is a greased up pig which you need to chase down and capture by right clicking on it you don't just have to right click on it instead you could turn on and enable the interact key and bind the interact with target button and use a key bind to do it if you're fast enough you can get two interacts in one and if everyone is using this technique you can catch lightning very quickly the next phase of this encounter then has ludwig von tortolan this mini boss spam casts shell bounce which causes a series of shells to spawn and bounce around the arena which you need to avoid not only do the shells hurt but they also knock you back so you need to make sure you aren't getting bounced between shells and taking a lot of damage in quick succession. The final boss of this encounter then is Trothak. This boss has three abilities you really need to watch out for. The first is Shark Tornado. It's a swirly around the boss, just make sure you don't stand on it. The next is Shark Toss, where a shark will randomly get thrown at a player and begin to chase them down. The shark will fixate on the nearest player and you need to quickly begin to kite the shark and if possible, take it to a ranged or healer player to move the sharks out of melee and make sure that they aren't hitting the tank. This is especially deadly for tanks if you end up getting the sharks as it will force you to run the boss around wildly which is not good because of the third and final ability you need to watch out for which is called rearm on a rearm cast trothak will charge towards the shark which has just been tossed at a player doing damage to anyone caught in between again you need to avoid this and the only way is to make sure you are not between the sharks and the boss i genuinely think that the best way of doing this is to stand in front of the boss's amelia at all times this will mean the boss will always charge away from you as a ranged player if you're already kiting the sharks you should be far enough away to avoid this damage just make sure you're not standing between
between the shark and the boss again. On to the final split of trash then. Firstly we have Ravages. These mobs have one cast called Painful Motivation which hits nearby mobs and does damage to them but also increases their damage done by 45%. It used to be that this cast would do a huge amount of damage to the mobs, something like 30% of their HP, and you could actually take it to bosses as well. This meant that you should never kick this cast as it was doing such a significant amount of damage that you would often pull these around the dungeon to increase your damage output throughout the dungeon. However, this has been tuned since, and now it does so little self-inflicted damage that I honestly am not entirely sure if you will kick this or not. But now I am suggesting that you do kick it to stop high incoming damage on tanks, as I genuinely believe the 6 to 10% HP that is going to be done from each of these casts is probably not worth it as it only hits two mobs. Next we have the Stormcallers. They have a large AoE cast called Thundering Squall which does massive damage and needs to be interrupted or stopped. And finally we have the last mob which is called an Officer. This mob has an oiled blade cast which will reduce healing by 75%, so as a tank make sure you are using defensives here if you are going to pull the officer, however most of the time you will be skipping them. On to the final boss of this instance then, Harlan Sweet. This boss has three phases, in the first phase only one player gets targeted by both the Swift Saber and the Cannon Barrage, the second phase everyone gets targeted by both of them, and in phase 3 Harlan casts all abilities more frequently but also takes 100% increased damage. The first phase starts between 100 and 60% HP, the second phase lasts until 30% HP and the final phase is below 30% HP. Because this final phase has such a significant damage increase, you can save Bloodlust and cooldowns for this phase to get it over and done with as quickly as possible. The Swift Men Saber cast is a set of swirlies which knocks players back. This by itself isn't that deadly but it could knock you into goo left by the cannon barrages which does huge damage and could be deadly, so always make sure you aren't going to be knocked into any more goo. The cannon barrage itself will target someone after a short delay cause massive damage, you need to dodge this. It's worth mentioning that A it is possible to stutter step this cast so these cannons don't take up too much space in the room but also B you can stack as a group in phase 2 to avoid covering the entire area in goo that you then can't stand in. The final ability is a vast ye which causes causes a grenadier to spawn which will run towards a random player and blow up. You can use any form of CC or roots to stop the ad running in and avoid this massive AoE damage. That's it for this guide then, I will also be releasing a video with tank roots for pugs in every single dungeon shortly that will be covering everything you need to know about the roots. On top of that I will also be releasing boss mini guides for each dungeon which are 1-2 to two minutes long and will act as quick reminders you can watch before each dungeon in season 2. So if any of that sounds good to you then feel free to drop me a subscribe and hit the bell icon and that means that you will be able to see that in the future. If you want to support me beyond a subscribe then you could also check out my Patreon. I offer some things in return such as dedicated UI support if you want anything changing or certain abilities to grow etc. I will work with you to implement these changes as necessary. And finally, if you have any questions, the best place to get me is probably on my Discord. I will always try and respond to any YouTube comments. However, if you want to have a conversation, it is much easier on Discord as it's much easier to track responses. My Discord also includes my UI etc linked over there, so feel free to go and check that out if you want to. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed this one. If you have, you will... Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed this one. If you have, we will see you guys in the next one. Peace.